hello there and welcome to Live with the Paper Pix Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 292. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. If you are watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from, and hello to those of you who are my replay warriors. Tonight is a back to school theme. I've got two projects for you, a cute little pencil pouch. I'm gonna show you how to make that with a minimal amount of designer series paper. And then stepping it up a little bit, I've got an impossible box for you. I love these. It is an impossible crayon box. So it holds a box of crayons. So excited to sh show you kind of two ends of the spectrum, a really easy project that uses a small amount of paper and stepping it up a notch with an impossible box. But I'm going to show you how to make it possible. It's one of my favorite box designs to share with you. I have wanted to create a box for crayons and some type of holder for pencils for a really long time. So I believe this is my first it's my first crayon box. I may have done a pencil box in the past, but I'm not sure. Um, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? My husband Brian is watching for your questions and comments today. If you do have a question for me, be sure to put a cue before that question. That will make it into my cue for the end of the live stream. I'm going to save all of your questions till the end so that I can focus on tonight's projects. And let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. The easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash slash shop. Wow, words are hard for me tonight. That will auto magically apply my current host code to your order. Now, if you're going to place a big order of $150 or more, don't leave the host code on there. Take the host code off because you're going to earn Stampin' Rewards on that order from Stampin' Up, but you'll also rece receive Pixie Perks from me as well. We do have a promotion going on this month, a sale on the kits collection. The kits are up to 30% off for the entire month of August. And also, if you earned bonus days coupons in the month of July, August is the month to redeem those. So for every $50 order you placed in July, you would have earned a $5 coupon code and there was no limit to how many coupon codes you could have earned. This is the month for you to redeem that and the kits collection sale is a great opportunity to do that if you haven't tried out our kits. Some of my favorites, the birthday kit, the birthday card organizer is one of them. There's a brand new festive tags kit. It's new and dropped yesterday, but it's discounted. So be sure to check that out again, thepaperpixie.com slash kits. Wow. <laughs> um, all right, so I actually don't have show and tell from the kids. Now, I suppose with the school you're starting, I will have future show and tells for you for sure. Tomorrow is meet the teacher day. We'll go get to go to the elementary school and meet Nolan and Lily's teachers. Nolan will be in second grade and Lily in fifth grade. And then we get to bring all of our school supplies. So I'm kind of showing you a little bit of a um, couple of different examples here. This says thanks. I'm not sure that you would give a teacher pencils as a thanks, but we're using, let me bring in the stamp sets we're using tonight. That thanks and the pencil comes from the everyday thanks stamp set, which I love this, especially for um, coaches and nurses and medical staff and teachers. It's a really great stamp set to have in your stash. So we're gonna be using the pencil and then the word thanks. For the impossible box, I pulled out the charming sentiment stamp set and we're using the good luck one, which would be cute for kids going back to school. We are, the similarities between these two are the designer series paper, and it's the beautiful, masterfully made designer series paper, which I've recently seen a video of how this was created, and it is literally cardstock and patterned paper that they ripped and tore and pieced together to make these beautiful patterns. And I've used this, I've used this paper previously, but I thought this was kind of a cool thing for back to school projects. I don't know, paper just reminds me of back to school. And then for both the projects, we're using this die cut from the All That Dies. I love this because it's got the, um, it's not scalloped, it's more of a, um, not deckled, what were those scissors called? Now I can't remember, I'm losing my brain cells today. Pinking shears is what it reminds me of, that edge. I knew it was gonna come to me. But you can also use the two inch circle punch if you don't have the All That Dies. The white circle is the one and three quarter inch circle punch, and that is available as an online exclusive. 
So we are gonna jump into, we're gonna start with the harder project first. And I know some of you have some a, a bit of a challenge with impossible boxes, but I still recommend that you give them a try. I love that the way that they the way they open and close. So let me show you that up close. It is literally like a lid and a box. Now watch, it's not gonna do it for me on live because my I'm nervous and spilling my words. This one was a little bit tighter than I wanted it to be. I made the sample in <laughs> wild wheat. Oh, see, this is what happens when you're live. It's supposed to slide up, there we go. I didn't break it in enough because I literally made it just before the live stream, but it slides up. <laughs> and then I've got a box of crayons in there. So the lid and the box are all part of the same thing. Hopefully you can see that mechanism. It is called an impossible box because it looks impossible. And I've got a full box, a 24 count box of crayons in that box, okay? So, um, let's go ahead and start with a piece of Pretty Peacock as the card base. And that piece measures nine inches, nine inches by seven and a, wait, I'm looking at the wrong measurements nine by seven and three quarters. So it doesn't take quite a full sheet of eight and a half by 11, but close, so nine by seven and three quarters. Oh good, Beth, you love them, I love them too. All right, so I'm going on the long side or the nine inch side, and the scoring measurements are going to be at three, four and a quarter, seven and a quarter, whoops, as I jumped the track there, seven and a quarter and eight and a half. Let me repeat those again. The nine inch side, three, four and a quarter, seven and a quarter, eight and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it clockwise and we're gonna score it at one and a quarter. Then five and a quarter. And for impossible boxes, I like to flip for the next two score lines. So I'm literally just flipping to the opposite side, but keeping it in the same orientation. So we've got the seven and three quarter inch side. That's just so we can score on the back side of the paper. So the next two score lines are going to be five and seven eighths, and six and a half. All right, now I'm bringing it back to that front side that we started with, and I've turned it. So we're on the nine inch side again. We've got an inch and a quarter at the top and an inch and a quarter at the bottom, but you'll notice we've got those two and they're actually five eighths of an inch in height. That's what you want towards the top here. Now I'm gonna fold back on the second score line from the top because we need to make a couple of tick marks here. Now, I like to burnish this just to kind of keep it a little bit more flat for me while I make the tick marks. So I'm pushing that folded edge. Now let me repeat that one more time. I folded back on the second score line from the top, okay? Push that up to the top and we're gonna make tick marks. And I'm gonna do that by just pressing the ball tip of my stylus right into the cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark at 5 eighths of an inch. Let me show you what that looks like. Just a little bit of a tick mark right there. Tick mark, is that a auditing term? I think it is. <laughs> Accountants in the house here. Um, so 5 eighths, 3 and 5 eighths, 4 and 7 eighths, and 7 and 7 eighths. So again, I've just got those four tick marks. I'll repeat those measurements again. Five eighths, three and five eighths, four and seven eighths, and seven and seven eighths, okay? And you just need to make those enough that you can see them. The camera's like, what am I focusing on here? <laughs> and we can go ahead and put the Simply Scored back. All right, so I'm gonna turn the fold towards me and the next thing I'm gonna do is pay, take my paper snips and I'm gonna cut up each of these vertical score lines, but I'm gonna stop at that first horizontal score line that we see. So I'm just gonna cut, again, I'm cutting through, because this is folded, I'm cutting through two layers of cardstock here. So you're gonna make four vertical cuts like so, okay? 
Then where we have the tick marks, we're gonna cut from the tick mark up and to the right. So I'm gonna cut from tick mark, we're going up to the score line. So cutting at a 45 degree angle. This one we're gonna happen to stop right at the edge of the cardstock there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, okay? Then I'm gonna cut from tick mark up and to the right, but coming to that next vertical cut we made. Like so. And I'll show you what it looks like and what we're doing here. Again, tick mark up and to the right, stopping at that next cut line, like so. And then tick mark up and to the right, stopping at the cut line again. So we've done that four times. The next thing I wanna do is actually remove this corner, but I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and I'm actually gonna kind of come in and miter cut. So I'm cutting up and to the right, I don't know, about a 16th or an eighth of an inch to remove that corner piece. And what I've done is miter cut it there. Now watch the magic of what we just did. When I go ahead and open this, what we've just done is created all of these triangles that are gonna be the basis of the impossible closure. So by folding it backwards and doing it that way, it goes a lot faster and it makes it look really, really easy. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do some burnishing. I am going to open this back up. This time I'm gonna fold backwards on that first score line. If you remember the top two score lines here, we had flipped and scored on the opposite side of the cardstock. So those two are gonna bend opposite of all the rest of the score lines. Okay, so we just wanna make sure that those two are folding backwards. But the rest of these the other two horizontals, we're gonna go ahead and fold the other way. So fold and burnish and fold and burnish. I'm gonna show you what that looks like from the side. So again, we've got the top two are going, in this view, they're both valley folds and the bottom two are both mountain folds, okay? So coming back this way, we need to do our vertical score lines to burnish, but before we do that, we wanna make sure we are folded back on that first top score line before we do the vertical folds. And that is because naturally, or we're trying to train the paper, it's gonna actually fold over itself. So you wanna make sure this is folded back and then I can fold and burnish. And you'll see this is still folded here and it's two layers of cardstock. That's just kind of like we say, like we say around here, telling the paper who's boss sort of just training that paper to be in the position we need it to be in. Now I have found that the last one, I can kind of just do the side one on its own. That's not wrapping around any layers of cardstock, but this little tab is like so. And I also noticed that I didn't miter cut the bottom part of that tab. So I'm just gonna come in and miter cut that. Okay, so we've done all the folding and burnishing, but now let's focus along the bottom of the impossible box. And I'm gonna show you, of course, I have a template and I'm not even showing it to you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line. Let me grab that template. There we go. All right, so focusing along the bottom, we wanna remove that lower right rectangular corner. And I also come in and miter cut right up the side there, like so. Then we've got these two tabs. So I like to fold the bigger sections out of the way to isolate the tabs. And I'm just gonna come in and miter cut those. All right, like so, okay? So when you open this up, that's what it's gonna look like, like the template. And you just wanna double check that you've got kind of your miter cuts happening along here and along the bottom as well with all the tabs that are sticking out, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is actually 
cut and adhere our designer series paper. I chose not to cut it ahead of time because I wanted to show you how I pieced this together for, um, especially with a pattern that we're using so that this stuff kind of lines up top to bottom. We're gonna be putting designer series paper along the top and the um, sides of the box. And I'm gonna pull in this gorgeous pattern. We're gonna do this fun color along the bottom. It's gonna be the same paper that we use for the pencil pouch as well. So um, I will have all of the measurements and I'll walk through them tonight as well, but I will have those all on the project sheet, which you can expect by the end of the day tomorrow, barring any unforeseen circumstances, which seem to be happening a lot this summer. Um, so I'm actually going to cut essentially what we're gonna need for the large panels are going to be pieces that measure two and five eighths by two and three quarters. And then the top panel, one inch by two and three quarters. So to get the top and the bottom to match, I'm gonna cut a strip to three and five eighths. And then we'll kind of cut our pieces and parts from that. Um, you want the, if you have a vertical pattern, you're gonna want the three and five eighths to go along the pattern. So for example, on this paper, I want the torn strips to be kind of going horizontally on my project. So I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and I'm gonna cut a three and five eighths inch strip. Like so. And you can kind of pick and choose. This paper is gorgeous. Again, we could do another three and five eighths inch strip that would be really pretty with the yellows and the oranges and the, um, what is that? Lost or Lost Lagoon, I think, and Pretty Peacock. All right, so now we're gonna switch it back and I'm gonna go ahead and cut two strips or two pieces to two and three quarters. And then two pieces to one inch. And then another one inch, there we go. All right, so what you've got at this point are two pieces that measure three and five eighths by one, and two pieces that measure three and five eighths by two and three quarters. But we need to cut an inch off of the top of all four of these pieces. So I kind of take it in its orientation, turn it clockwise, and then I'm gonna cut off a one inch piece. The only thing you wanna make sure you do here is make sure that you keep the pieces together so you know which pieces go with which as you're going to go ahead and line this up and adhere it to um, your project. So I'm looking at the one inch measurement along the right, like so. And then you're gonna end up having just little one inch squares coming off of this, but this just ensures that I know the pieces and parts that go together, or I should say the patterns that go together. And if you've got a paper that's not directional, it really doesn't matter. All right, so I've got kind of all my pieces and parts here, just kind of keeping them lined up. I'm gonna bring my pretty peacock cardstock back, and then I've got that again. I'm actually gonna fold it on the second score line from the top, I'm gonna to show you why. So let me grab my liquid glue. This panel here is gonna be the front of your impossible box. So you just wanna pick which one, one of the patterns you like the most. I'm gonna pick this one for the front because it seems to have the most white strips to it. I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting liquid glue on the back of it. And I designed the measurements so that the top edge goes right up to where the cardstock lid comes down. So by folding down on the second score line from the top, I can actually butt up the top edge of that to the bottom edge of the cardstock that I folded down. You've got an eighth of an inch of the pretty peacock peeking around, like so. Okay, see how that comes right to the top of that designer series paper. That way when you're looking at the box, you have all of these 1 8 inch uh, pieces of pretty peacock peeking around from behind. All right, so the 1 inch one, again, is gonna go in this panel. 
so many colors from this masterfully made uh, designer series paper you could use for the cardstock base for this. I'm gonna move over to the next section. Well, let's do the big ones first. That's messing with my brain. <laughs> Again, just using that edge of the cardstock as a guide. And I'm centering it right to left between the score lines and the edge of the cardstock. <laughs> Everyone's concentrating, that's right. This is a very, very cool box. I have done, I don't know, a dozen of them maybe, if not more. We've made them for the pocket back, hand sanitizer. Uh, gosh, what else have I done? I don't even know. I did a popper that was like a double-ended um, impossible box. So both ends of it were the impossible closure. That was really cool for a New Year's project. Bunch of different sizes for different things. I love them and it's fun to figure out the measurements too. Not easy, but fun. <laughs> Just my analytical brain there for you. I'm going to turn it this way because you know me. It's easier for me to line up with it going horizontal. This paper is gorgeous. And then one more little square. Yes, Bath and Body Lotion, Beth, thank you. I'm getting to the point where <laughs> I have so many projects, I can't recall all of them. I wish I could. But usually if someone asks me if I've done something, I can usually re remember if I haven't. <laughs> so, all right, so isn't that paper really pretty the way we've got that lined up? I love this designer series paper. So now is the part where you're brave and you go ahead and put your box together. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this to the back side. Uh, we are going to fold it back. Let me clarify this again. We are gonna fold it back up to that first score line from the top and then flip it over. I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left. Ignore this tab. We are not gonna put any adhesive on that tab until we put the box together. So I'm going to take liquid glue and you really want to try to make sure you've got everything pressed flat here. But again, don't put any adhesive on the smaller tab. We're just putting adhesive on the longer or taller one. And then I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right, really just focusing on this section because that's the only section that we're laying down here. And if you've got everything pressed flat, your score line should help you line that up right where it needs to go. Oh, Deanna, I love that her UPS driver gets some possible boxes. That's so cool. All right, so we've got kind of the, the basics of the box put together. Again, we're kind of ignoring the top for now because we're going to have to just kind of work the paper a little bit before we adhere that in, into place. So I'm going to focus on the bottom. We've got our seam here along the side. This is our back. So I'm going to go ahead and fold in the tabs and then liquid glue on the tabs. Welcome Jody. And then liquid glue along the front tab. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and push the two tabs in the back flap and then the front flap. And because we're using liquid glue, I can kind of just square everything up along the bottom. And I can kind of push down a little bit. This lid's going into place, but that'll just give me a little bit of leverage. And then the best thing to do is to grab your box of crayons. That's going to help us with the next part. See if I can get it out of the original. Oh, see, now it's just super easy to open. <laughs> it was messing with me. I only have one box of crayons that I'm, well, the rest of them are sitting and getting ready to go to school supplies, aren't they? All right, so the front, here we go. I'm gonna put the box of crayons in the right way. So I've just got the lid lifted up as, as wide open as I can get that part there and put my box of crayons in. Now, if this top part of your crayons is giving you a hard time, you can always just tape that down with a piece of scotch tape. I think you could probably trim it. You know what? I'm gonna be a rebel and tear it off because there's 
perforation there so it doesn't get in our way because we don't need to hang it, right? <laughs> so there we go. We're going to put that right in there like so. That's going to give us a little bit of leverage when we go to put this together. Now, I'm not touching my glue yet. We want to make sure we sort of train the paper to do what we need it to do. So I'm just kind of tucking the tab behind and then I'm going to press and slide it down into place. Because of the fact that we had it folded backwards on that top score line, this cardstock should be right in position to where we need it to be, with the exception of the tab here. So I am literally just kind of playing with the cardstock here, kind of training it, breaking down the fibers a little bit along the edges there, like so. I just like to do this a few times. I don't think I did this with my sample. Okay, so. The next thing we're doing, I'm going to open it loosely. I'm going to pop out that tab just a little bit. Now with the liquid glue, you want to stay about an eighth of an inch away from the score line because this isn't going to exactly match up with the cut edge because of the fact that we are basically going over two layers of cardstock. So just to show you, right along the edge there, you'll see there's a little bit of a gap. And that's okay. That's just because the cardstock's folding over onto itself. So keep that in mind when you apply the liquid glue. Just gonna do a little bit, not too much, but I am about an eighth of an inch away from that score line. So now I wanna tuck the tab in, or should say just behind, and then I can press this into place. And then I'm just gonna focus a little bit here on that tab and just make sure everything's lined up and press into place there. You do want to give it a little bit of time to adhere. And then we're going to play with it again. <laughs> so, there we go. But you'll see we have that designer series paper going right up to where that lid meets. So then you have kind of this uniform eighth of an inch of the pretty peacock peeking around. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I love the way it looks on the top when it opens and closes. It's like this total, ma it should be called a magic impossible, or impossible magic box. <laughs> I don't know. That's a mouthful. But there we go. Okay. Yes, a gift card will fit, Virginia, believe it or not. This would actually be kind of a cute little gift for a teacher, even though they probably don't need any crayons. But yes, a gift card will absolutely fit in the box. There's a little bit of wiggle room. Um, I left a little bit of wiggle room kind of front and back because um, the uh, crayon box, I didn't want to make the impossible box too snug but then because then you just get frustrated. Um, so there's a little bit of wiggle room to put a little note in there or a gift card cash, check, you name it. So um, the finished measurements of the box are, let's see, four inches by three inches by an inch and a quarter. So I'm sure you guys can find a bunch of other things to fit in the box. It's a really good sized box. Um, again, size to fit crayons, but you could absolutely come up with maybe a set of note cards or something that would be cute to fit in there, kind of a different size. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really cute box. So I'm going to do a really simple um, embellishment for the front of it uh, just because we've got kind of a special box and I didn't want to do too much to embellish it because the box itself is gift in and of itself, isn't it? So I'm going to bring in again from the all that dies and we're going to die cut. I'm actually going to die cut two pretty peacock circles because we're going to use the other one on the little pencil pouch. So we might as well get the die cutting out of the way. Just got a little scrap piece of pretty peacock here. I'm gonna grab the uh, Bath and Body Works Impossible box. I think that um, blog post has measurements for both sizes, the eight ounce and the 10 ounce, depending on whether you're doing the lotion or the shower gel because I think they're one's eight ounce and one's ten ounce I think anyways there should be extra measurements in the blog post all right I don't know why I just put that there. <laughs> can't talk and do things at the same time 
as Brian says, I can't talk and drive at the same time, can I? <laughs> All right, so we'll save one of those for the pencil pouch. And I'm just going to use pretty peacock ink. Um, the Bath and Body Works, if you type in Impossible Box, did you type in Impossible Box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do Impossible Box, you probably find it faster that way. So the sentiment, good luck from Charming Sentiments. It's like black and gray and has specialty paper, that one. Yeah, the Simply Elegant one. I'm going to use the, I had to put the sticker on here so I remembered it was an online exclusive, um, the one and three quarter inch circle punch. And that fits really nicely inside of this uh, die cut circle. Okay. I'm just going to grab a trio of dimensionals. Oh, you guys have fun ideas. I love it. You even do a cute like little activity box or something for a road trip. I'm listening to the crayons. It reminds me of something like that. So I'm going to add one more thing because you know what it needs. Some type of bling. I'll do a big one. Just pop it right down there in the bottom. So there we have our impossible crayon box. And I've got a little hidden opening or a built-in box with lid. The impossible crayon box. Let me bring in the other ones so you can see the designer series paper. I love this paper so, so much. So those are the two different versions of that. We'll bring that back uh, before the Q&A so I can show you all the projects together. So now let's jump into the little pencil pouch. And this one, all you need is a piece of designer series paper that measures six inches by two and three quarters. So this is size to fit three Ticonderoga pencils. Well, I think it's it's pretty standard. They're pretty standard pencils, but this was a box of 12. These would be cute for a craft fair. Um, so yeah, it's three of these, and I bought a whole bunch of boxes intending to do a project many moons ago. <laughs> and I finally was like, you know what? It's back to school next week, so let's do it. So with your six inch by two and three quarter inch piece of designer series paper, we're gonna do some simple scoring here. And let me flip to my measurements so I don't forget. I made, I don't know how many <laughs> iterations. I was trying to come up with um, something I was happy with and I just made a whole bunch of crazy iterations and this is one I end up with. It's my favorite of the bunch. Um, so again, six by two and three quarters and along the short side or the two and three quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at seven eighths one and one eighth, two, and two and a quarter. Okay, so seven eighths, one and one eighth, two, two and a quarter. And I'm gonna throw you off here and I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise because it's easier to do five and a half inches as opposed to doing a little half inch here on the left. Okay, so again, one more time, six by two and three quarters, seven eighths, one and one eighth, two, two and a quarter, rotate counterclockwise, and five and a half, okay? So there we go. All 
All right, so then the next thing is to fold and burnish on all the score lines. You have to take your time just a little bit because those score lines are pretty close, only being a quarter of an inch apart. And then we've got the little half inch along the bottom. Let me bring in the template so you can kind of picture what we're doing because it's a pretty busy paper. So there is the silly skinny template, okay? So I like to kind of flip this to the back. For some reason, it's just easier for me to see the score lines. But I am going to cut up either side of this second 7 eighths of an inch section, okay? So you got the one here on the left and then... I'm gonna only cut up on either side of the one in the middle, I guess, but I'm gonna flip it over so I can see it better. Those are the only two vertical cuts that you need to make because we're gonna keep this one tab. The rest of these we're gonna just remove. So just come on in and cut along the score line to remove those sections, like so, so that what you have left is the singular tab along the bottom. So I'm gonna come in and miter cut that. And then we're gonna have a 7 eighths of an inch section here on the left and a half inch section here on the right. I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm gonna come in and miter cut on either side of the half inch section. Like so. So it's just like that. Easy peasy. All right, now I like to use liquid glue for this. You could absolutely use um, tear and tape as well, but we're gonna use liquid glue for the bottom, so I figured it's just easiest to have the liquid glue out. Flipping it to the back, and I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left. I do the second just so that I have, I know where to kind of stop with the liquid glue. So I'm gonna just put liquid glue right up to that score line. So don't go past the score line. And then kind of folding this flat, I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right and then press everything flat. Like so, you can burnish it if you want to as well. Just kind of get that adhesive to it here. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck, Julie? The bottom looks like it's not going to go together. So this is the fun part that makes this really easy. As opposed to having a bunch of tiny little tabs and another extra score line um, to kind of piece together and close like a box, we're just going to pinch the bottom. So I'm just going to take my index fingernails and I'm just push pushing on either side of... On, I'm pushing on either side, <laughs> full stop. <laughs> and then I'm just going to pinch... And I'm only pinching kind of towards the bottom here, like kind of the bottom half inch. And that's going to allow us to put liquid glue on that tab, like so. And I'm just going to pinch and fold and pinch. <laughs> so it's just kind of pinched together like so. And you can just pinch to hold it in place. That's going to prevent the pencils from falling through the bottom. And it also is going to serve as holding the pencils in the pouch so that they don't, that they don't fall out. You're going to have a little bit of tension here with um, sort of the pinched end. And I found that that keeps those pencils in there nice and snug so they won't fall out. Because there's no um, closure to this box. There's no lid. Um, so that's what it's going to look like from the side. So kind of pinched at the bottom. Oh, so cute. And I love it with those torn strips of designer series paper in the actual paper pattern. So grabbing a trio of number two Ticonderoga pencils. <laughs> and these are the specific pencils the kids are required to have, or at least that was last year. Did they ask for Ticonderoga? Yes, Brian's. Brian did all the school shopping. So I have to tell a funny Brian wouldn't let me do the school shopping because I don't look at the prices. <laughs> He's like, I'll take care of it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's such a good shopper. So I'm just pushing those in. I'm not pushing too hard, but they're coming right down to the pinched ends there. And you'll see that they are staying in that pouch. So cute. So it's a snug fit on either side, the front and the back, and also the bottom. And it's just a cute little... Um, pouch for pencils. I thought it was so cute. So we're going to do a little bit of 
you guys are gonna gasp. I'm actually gonna use my stamp and blend on very simple coloring here. Let me grab some grid paper to protect my surface. Sometimes the uh, stamp and blends can bleed through the basic white. And I didn't have another scrap. All right, so let me bring in a little pencil stamp. And we're gonna use Memento Tuxedo Black. This is the ink that you wanna use with our Stampin' Blends. Kind of do opposites. Our Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based, so you wanna use a water-based ink for the base. They, they won't make each other bleed. And then I'm just making sure that's inked up really well. There we go. I'm just gonna end up fussy cutting the pencil. This is fussy cutting that I can do. I don't love a bunch of nooks and crannies. <laughs> it's just not my favorite thing. And I just grabbed a whole bunch of colors of Stampin' Blend, so I'll kind of tell you the colors as I go. Uh, let's go ahead and start with, we'll do the eraser. For that one, I've got Dark Flirty Flamingo. So we'll do that first. Definitely not true to color for the Ticonderoga pencils, but Flirty Flamingo just reminds me of pencil eraser color. All right, so there's that. Then I've got Dark Smoky Slate. I'm gonna do that for the little, I guess we could have done green, but I remember these being silver back in the day. And we've got Dark Daffodil Delight. I think my Daffodil Delight is getting dry. And the fun thing about, the thing about this is you can make your pencils any color you want. I opted to go with true to basics or back to basics. And I love Stampin' Blends because you don't get any of those marks. Um, and then, what did I use? I brought them both out, but I only used one. <laughs> I knew I was gonna do that. Let's go ahead with Light, the SE1000. This is from the Natural Tones. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the wood part. But you could really use anything there. And then for the pencil tip, I'm just using light basic black. Let's use the pen side because it's a tiny area. So super quick and easy, but that sure looks like a pencil. Love it. A big chunky pencil. I love the, I love the shape of this one from this set. All right, so then I'm just gonna grab my paper snips and we're gonna fussy cut. And I'm just going right up to the edge. If you wanted to have a white border, absolutely do that. So cute, we brought that little pencil to life. All right. So we've got our die cut circle from the All That Dies. I'm going to punch a white circle from the one and three quarters circle punch. Then I'm going to stamp the word thanks in memento. And I have to remember, I'm gonna bring in the inked and tiled punch pack. Just picturing how I'm going to put, okay, so the thanks needs to go at an angle. <laughs> you could uh, easily fussy cut this as well. That's 
thanks from the same stamp set. And then the inked and tiled punch pack. I love this because it's great for kind of the smaller sentiments. So I'm just going to put the thanks right in the middle of that little plus. Like so. And then just bring in my paper snips and trim off the top and the bottom of the plus. Like so. And you got that little sentiment to pop up on there. Cute. All right, let's build this. So liquid glue on the one and three quarter inch basic white circle. Trying to center that in. I love this all that because you've got the, um, the pinking shears edge, but it also has a little bit of embossing to it or debossing, I should say. Gives it a little bit of added texture. The pencil, I'm just gonna put liquid glue kind of in the daffodil delight section because it is gonna hang off of the circle a little bit. And then we're gonna put our thanks kind of across the pencil there with some dimensionals. Could use many dimensionals for this too. And let's see. My tag was going a little bit wonky last time, but we're just going to roll with it. I'll show you a trick to make it do what you want to do. Um, I'm actually going to turn this into a tag, and maybe yeah, we're going to try it again. I just got a little eighth of an inch uh, hole punch here and I'm just gonna punch towards the top to make this a little bit of a tag. And I'm on the tail end of this spool of linen thread. I'm gonna grab my bone folder and kind of smooth that out a little bit. All right, so I'm going to feed this through the tag, so through the front gonna pull out a length there. We're gonna go kind of behind the pencil pouch. And then I'm just gonna wrap this around, I don't know, one. Let's do a little bit longer, two. And then come back to the left side there. I was trying to find my tweezers, but I think I'm gonna use these reverse tweezers. We're gonna just go ahead and tie a little bow here, but I'm gonna use my, this comes from the Embossing Editions Toolkit. It's not my normal tweezers that I use because I don't know where they are. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and do a bow. And I use the reverse tweezers to be sort of a third hand. Kinda hold that center knot in place. So it gives me a chance to make my bow here. There we go. Then I can zhuzh. Twist and tighten and whatever you need to do to make the ribbon look cute. <laughs> I call it zhuzhing. And then we'll go ahead and trim off the ends. There we go. All right, so if you wrapped it around fairly snug, it should stay into place. I actually think that's cute, kind of hanging off cattywampus like that. But if you wanted to kind of place that tag in a, a spot to stay, you can just put a couple of dimensionals on the back so it looks like a tag, but it's also attached to where you want it. But, so there we go. That is the pencil box. Just using a different pattern from the same masterfully made designer series paper. So here's the one that's just in the pretty peacock pattern. That's what those look like. And then we've got our two impossible boxes. So fun back to school projects tonight. Again, the project sheet will post um, before the end of the day tomorrow project sheets. I'll have one for each project. And just a quick reminder before we jump into Q&A, we do have a kits collection sale, so 30% uh, off 
the kits collection, the paperpixie.com slash kits. I also have a lot of great stuff still in my retired item sale. You can visit the paperpixie.com slash retired to check that out. And um, don't forget to redeem your bonus day coupon codes. I'll remind you at the end. But let's go ahead and tee up tonight's Q&A. Thank you, Brian, for helping to grab the questions. Let's see, so Lynn, Georgia's time is different. We are on Eastern time. So technically right now it is 8.52 p.m. in the Atlanta area. Ooh, good question, Yvette. What didn't I order today? No, so what she's asking about is today was the demonstrator, the start of the demonstrator pre-order period for the new mini catalog. That's the September to December 2023 mini catalog. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot wait until you see it. If you're not a demonstrator, um, it is incredible. Now, one really cool perk, it is a demonstrator perk, but you can actually add products from the mini catalog to a starter kit if you can't wait until September 6th when that catalog's available for purchasing. So um, if you visit the paperpixie.com slash join, uh, you can actually browse and shop the new mini catalog products that can be added to a starter kit. So that's kind of a cool perk this month. Um, I'm trying to think, Yvette, one of the things I'm most excited about are the deckled circles dies. I can't remember how many are in the set, but I'm excited about that one. I love the new, there's like a garden suite that doesn't necessarily lean towards Christmas or holiday, even though it does have some sentiments and some patterns in it. Um, that one comes with a really cool kind of oval circle style punch. Oh gosh, the designer series papers are incredible. And yes, there may be a question coming up. I will be doing product shares, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, and my customers who earned the opportunity to get a catalog already received their email. And um, I ordered those catalogs this morning as well. So I do plan to do a product, new product sneak peek. I think I haven't gotten the shipping um, tracking number yet. I was hoping I would get them by Friday, but we may not do the sneak peek until uh, early next week. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eye on the YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber and uh, have notifications turned on, go ahead and do that. And I will do a special live stream for a sneak peek as well. So I can't wait to show you the new stuff. Let's see. Oh, um, the thanks stamp set comes oh it does not come with matching dies sorry to say it is just a stamp set um but that would be really cute now if you have a scan and cut you could absolutely cut those images out with a scan and cut but i know that that's quite an investment but just if you already have one that's an option um, but no it doesn't come with dies unfortunately Bobby, you can always find the project sheet instructions in the description of the video. So if you are looking at it either on a computer or mobile, underneath the video, you'll likely see part of a sentence maybe, and then a little link that says more. If you click more and then more again, you'll be able to find the project sheets. Now, quick disclaimer, the project sheets from tonight's projects will not post until the end of the day tomorrow, uh, but you can find the project sheets for past projects in the uh, video description. So it's a little bit more difficult to find, I think because it depends on which device you're looking on, but just look for more in the text underneath the video to expand and find links to the project sheets for you. Yes, Mary, that is correct. Um, my blog posts have kind of gone to the bottom of the list since my dad passed away. I do plan to add that back to my workflow, but I was giving myself some grace until the kids go back to school. They were home this summer for the first summer um, and didn't attend any summer camp. So we were just trying to weave things in between the nooks and crannies of our day this summer. Um, they're going back to school on Monday. I'm going to miss them, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to having a little bit more extra time to get back to blog and other things that I like to offer you guys. So stay tuned for that. But yes, April something was the last blog post. But you can find all of the project sheets for projects since then and before that in the video description on YouTube. I, did, I do make sure to get those project sheets done for you. Let's see. I did pre-order from the new mini catalog. Yes. Oh, my favorite bundle or suite. I think it's the... 
I want to say it's Garden Walk. That one is the one that kind of has called to me the most. I love the stamp set, the designer series paper, the colors. Um, and I'm not going to remember the names of the other suites, but there was, I don't know, three or four of the suites that I had to have. So I'm excited to see those products uh, up close and in person. Great question, Michelle. It's just the catalog timing that Stampin' Up! is trying out this year. We had the, um, the first mini catalog this year was January through April. The, um, this mini is September through December, so they're testing out doing a four-month um, period of time for catalogs. Um, the catalog timing has changed over the last couple of years as they've um, kind of migrated. We had a transition period where we had a catalog that started later I don't know we kind of have zigzagged a little bit so this one feels really late because I think this is one of the first times we've had a mini catalog not launch until September and I know we're all itching to work with Christmas products but it's just they changed up the timing this year who knows we may see a change in the timing next year based on how this year year goes they're trying it out but um, no real specific reason other than just trying to space some things out it gave us some additional time with the annual catalog because I think sometimes when the mini catalogs come out. The annual catalog doesn't get a whole lot of love when that happens. So I've actually appreciated having some extra time with the annual catalog. I think I answered this one. So printed instructions, they will be in the description of the video. Ooh, I think the chat has probably helped you out with a couple of ideas. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I saw a couple things floating through like a box of cards. Might be a little too, um, there'll be a little bit of extra room in there. Maybe a box of cards and some sweet treats or something. Um, I saw a box, uh, tissues were an example, some things like that. So, um, but again, the measurement's three by four by an inch and a quarter. So you can try a couple of different things in there for sure. I have not gotten my catalog yet, although I haven't checked the mailbox today, have we? I don't think we have. Maybe it'll be in my mailbox today. Um, but they have been, uh, catalogs have been sent to demonstrators, so that's what Sue's asking about. You took care of Carol, right? Carol, we put that um, link in the description for you, or in the chat for you. Could you use that box with something that has a popsicle stick? It would come up from the middle of the closure. Oh, the popsicle stick would come up. I think you could. You just have to be strategic about um, when you go to close the box. You got to make sure you've got a little bit of a gap there for the popsicle stick, but worth a try for sure. Would a nail file fit? I think so. You're asking about the pencil pouch. I believe so, Brenda. Um, this is seven eighths of an inch in width this way, and I think Let's see if I have a nail file. A bone folder would fit, I think. Yeah, I think a nail file would fit. A bone folder fits as well. Now it's a little bit loose in there, but um, I think a nail file would fit. Great question. Ooh, how much glue do I go through? I actually, I don't go through as much as you would think. And I'm telling you, these bottles of multipurpose liquid glue are super economical. I can make one bottle last a really long time. Now, if I'm making like 100 cards, I will probably go through maybe like a bottle and a half. But that's like a lot of layers and lots of adhesive. So um, it all depends. It all depends how many layers and things. But I don't go through glue as much as you think that I would. I think we answered that one, Barbara. Just a couple of ideas from the chat. Let's see, do I know if there will be free shipping coming up soon, trying to maximize my savings? I have about 100 in coupons and credits to use. We don't know about free shipping. Um, I would guess there won't be a free shipping this month since we just had one last month, but I don't get a heads up on that. It's always a surprise flash sale, so just stay tuned for that. Let's see. So Michelle, they're actually doing three catalogs per year, if that's what you're thinking of. Um, so there's the mini in January through April, the annual catalog May to May, and then the next mini September to December. So we get kind of three throughout the year, two minis and an annual. Yes, Sandra, I am definitely gonna be doing paper shares. Um, you can almost bet on me doing paper shares. So I've already figured it out. Um, I will wait since the pre-order only just started today. It's really early for me to be announcing my product shares, but they are coming. 
Um, so if you've, if you've participated in my product shares in the past, you're likely already on my email list for that. So you'll be the first to be notified. And then I'll make sure um, to share it on my live stream when they're open for sign up. So stay tuned for that probably in the next week, week and a half. All right, so where do I get the ideas for my projects? Hello to Brian. <laughs> um, I kind of just get, well, ideas for my projects typically come from a combination of Pinterest, um, things that I might see at the grocery store or Target that I might want to come up with a box for, um, and then other inspiration kind of from the catalog. So if, I, if I'm trying to put together sort of a layout or a design or um, elements that I like from projects, I'll get a lot of inspiration from the catalog itself, as well as from Pinterest, kind of my starting sounding board for ideas. And then it's just a matter of playing with paper. Usually when I make or I, I, I set out to design or create a project, I have a bunch of different prototypes that a lot of them end up going into the recycling bin um, but that's part of the creative process that I love is just figuring it out what I like what I don't like do I like the way that looks or the way something else looks kind of combining ideas but yeah Pinterest the catalog other um, well Pinterest uh, lots of other ideas from other demonstrators as well so kind of inspiration everywhere but great question Connie, great question. Um, I did set up my blog, but I am um, a little more tech savvy. Um, I do recommend um, Integrant Services. They maintain my blog for me and they also can set up a blog for you as well. Um, so if you're not tech savvy, I recommend hiring help as well, but I love Integrant Services. So Integrant Services, if I'm not saying that clearly, great question. Alrighty, we have reached the end of the Q&A. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's video or learned a tip or trick or two, be sure to give us a thumbs up if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber so you can be notified when our next videos come out. I will have a product, new product sneak peek coming up. We will be live again next Wednesday for episode 293. Reminder, Kits Collection Sale. Kits are th up to 30% off. For the month of August, you can check out my retired item sale, thepaperpixie.com slash retired. And if you've got bonus days coupons, this is the month to redeem them. You can redeem now through August 31st. Um, and again, if you want to get your hands on pre-order products, you can add those to a starter kit now. You can join my team at thepaperpixie.com slash join and take advantage of the perk of the pre-order. So I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Stay tuned for a future new product sneak peek. Otherwise, I will see you next Wednesday. And remember, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Take care. Bye.